Hello there, welcome to IndyCar on the 24th, is it? 24th of March. This is an unusual show because if you look at the top line above my head here appearing on the screen, you'll see this is going to be the last live IndyCar show that I make on Facebook. Over the weekend, I had a chance to think about the way things are going politically, the way that social media is changing, and also my own ability to marshal the facts <coughs> and present them live with their script. As you may know that um, uh, last week, in fact the last episode that I filmed, I made a huge mistake and it's caused a lot of problems for Salvo, <coughs> Salvo pardon me, in Glasgow because my memory is not as reliable as it should be and uh, I conflated two events and caused a tremendous amount of confusion for Salvo Glasgow who were having a closed meeting yesterday, not an open public meeting as I had said. So here to, today basically to apologize to all the people who wasted their time. Luckily, there weren't too many of you, but I'd like to apologize personally to those of you who turned up having traveled a long distance to get to that meeting only to find that you couldn't attend it uh, and couldn't see the movie uh, of um, the, tr the Union on Trial, as I'd said. So I apologize to everyone who showed up and was whose time was wasted. I do apologize. Not every time uh, I do a show do I get everything right, but usually, um, if I do make a mistake, it's usually I've misspoken. But over the weekend, I had to think about the way things are going, not just with IndyCar, but with my own health and my own uh, ability to marshal the facts. I used to have a tremendous memory and would usually be able to remember every fact that I had read recently over the last few minutes. However, that has been diminishing with age. And so it's not reliable enough. And when mistakes like this happen and cause so much trouble, I'm actually causing more damage than good. However, that's not the reason why this is the last IndyCar. It's one of the reasons. The other reason is that Facebook almost uniquely actually has targeted this channel and has made certain that there are virtually no live audience. And they've done that very simply with their algorithms or other, other methods. Uh, by simply preventing people's notifications from showing when the, the shows are going live. So if anybody is lucky enough to see this at the moment, well, well done you. I don't know how you managed it. But anyway, this will eventually reach a few people. So the reasons are two, basically. I don't feel that I'm in the, the right place really to keep doing this anymore. Uh, it relies entirely on excellent memory for 20 minutes to be able to produce a live stream like this without a script and I plainly do not have the memory capacity I used to have so that's one reason the other reason is as you know Facebook particularly is dumbing down and its algorithms and its other means of controlling what you see and what you hear live have now meant that IndyCar uniquely amongst um, as far as I can tell anyway independence video blogs has been effectively sidelined and isolated from its audience and therefore as a live streaming platform it's useless now. Uh, it's impossible for me to get the audience numbers I used to have and at the height of the show I would have said at one point, certainly around 2017, 2018, IndyCar was pulling over half a million viewers per month and that has gone down and down and down and down to dwindling to just a few thousand a month and eventually it's going to go down to zero so it seems like a good time to stop doing this the other thing I feel quite strongly is that it should never have been the case that one person in a car ended up producing the only supposedly independent uh, political news and analysis television program in the whole of Scotland it's ridiculous we should have our own TV channels and uh, that is something which IndyCar sought to try and do something about in its 10 year history. However, I can't keep doing this forever. And, and like everybody else who's involved in the independence movement and has been campaigning for decades, you get to the point where you just can't do it anymore. Uh, physically and mentally not able to. My life is so complicated now, particularly with my own health, my wife's health, and the fact that we have elderly relatives who now need us to look after them plus my own kids and their lives and so on and so on, plus the work-life balance. It's, it's almost impossible now to do these programs successfully uh, to the standard I would like uh, and without making the kind of errors that happened on Friday. So, 
in the car will now stop basically so I wanted to thank everybody who has been diligently watching this program and supporting it both with their audience figures and also with the donations. I'm not going to be asking for any more donations from you for IndyCar because I'm not going to need them. I am working on other ways at the moment of producing news and analysis content um, offline and posting it online in the form of links. So I probably will do some more IndyCar shows but they will not be live streamed. They will still appear on Facebook, they'll appear on YouTube, they may appear on other social platforms as well when people share them, but if you're looking for news, up-to-date news on the political scene in Scotland, what is happening behind the scenes and the reasons why it's happening, you may need to have a look for those links instead. It's a sad fact of life, but social media across the planet is being heavily politically restricted and depoliticized by governments across the world. As turmoil rages across the planet, we seem to be on a war footing with Russia. It's getting daily more and more worrying what's happening across Europe. And in the United Kingdom, our own government seems to be twiddling its thumbs and hoping that doing nothing about it means that it will just somehow resolve itself. And this is the problem with British politics as I see it at the moment. They think that if they keep doing the same things over and over again, they'll get a different result, which is of course the definition of insanity. Plainly, the United Kingdom, and more particularly Scotland, need new forms of governance, and the Tories and the Labour Party are just not in any fit state to do either of those things. They are stuck in their own political dogmas and unable to react appropriately to the changing political circumstances. So we won't see any colossal political changes in the UK. However, and uh, this is probably going to be my final point on the subject, I would say the best thing that you can do at the moment, in fact there are two best things that we can all do at the moment, one is during the general election vote for the SNP because there isn't any other party realistically large enough uh, to take seats in Westminster and to continue some kind of political fight back for Scotland's independence even if it isn't producing a, a referendum at the moment, but something will eventually shake loose. So we need to vote for at least the nominally independence party and the SNP is the only one and I'll continue to vote for them as well. The second thing that we have to do is switch from sitting online and relying on one or two people to give us news and to kind of focus our attention on what's happening and get out and demonstrate. Marching and demonstrating civil disobedience, major uh, physical demonstrations are the only thing left open to us. Once your, um, your government depoliticizes your social media and prevents you from exercising free speech or prevents you from watching live shows of any sort without interference, that means that your free speech is basically boiled down to posting pictures of your dinner, your pets, and talking about your mental health. And that's really what social media is going back to being. We're, we're being prevented from seeing what is actually going on around us. Uh, we are being basically, uh, our news is being redacted, not just in Scotland, but everywhere. I mean. I know of one uh, pro-Ukrainian blogger whose entire show, which normally goes out on YouTube, is heavily censored by YouTube itself. He's not even allowed to say the word missile. He has to substitute that for metallic cylinders. He's not allowed to say dead. He's not allowed to say shot. The various words he's not allowed to say. And so his show is a bizarre mix of silences and bleeps and um, curious words which don't appear to actually mean anything and all because that social media platform doesn't want people to understand what's really happening in Ukraine. So if it's happening there and it's happening here, it's happening in other places as well. So I think we need to get off social media in terms of political organisation, maybe use it to communicate with each other, but apart from that it's pretty much a useless uh, platform now for any kind of political live streaming. I know that um, the Two Davies show is live streamed on a different platform in a different way and they seem to be doing well so keep watching uh, the Two Davies. They are probably going to be carrying the can really for the entire um, movement for the time being and I wish them both well. I'm kind of retiring 
temporarily and reconsidering new methods of making programs. I have some irons in the fire at the moment. They're a little bit more long term, but I will be back. But in the meantime, this is really the last ever episode that you'll see live from me in the car. But I'll still be around. I'll still be posting online, incidentally, on Facebook and other platforms. But I won't be live streaming for the time being. And we thank you all very much for your uh, continued support over the past 10 years. It's been a remarkable period in my life. I never anticipated ever doing this. And I certainly never imagined myself as some kind of television presenter. just wasn't ever in the cards for me. But having ended up doing it, uh, I am very grateful for having the opportunity to do so. And I hope it's helped everyone um, in some way. I hope it's helped advance the cause in some way as well and kept people focused. If the polls for support for independence are to be believed, we have managed to keep that going. And the support for independence continues to grow and it continues to solidify. And I hope that can, keeps going. But it's up to us now to make sure that that happens. And physical campaigning is now really the only way to do that. So get out there and march is my advice to you and vote for the SNP at the next two general elections to ensure that at least we have an independence party in government here, even if it's unable to do very much uh, within the rules of the United Kingdom. But having them there is still essential. It keeps us focused on the task, no matter how frustrating it might be that they can't do anything about it. So thank you again. Um, I will sign off now, but I will say what I always say, which is keep the faith. Because a cause like this doesn't die just because one person cannot do live streams. Someone else will step in and take up the challenge. And I'm sure there were many of you out there who will have a go at this, and many of you will succeed. So have a go at it. Uh, just because I've been targeted doesn't mean that you will. And the more of us do this, the harder it is for Facebook to shut down all news coming out of live streaming. So have a go at it yourself. But remember that eventually when you become successful, you will be shut down because that's the nature of the British state. That's it for me. Thank you very much for 10 years of amazing, uh, <laughs> amazing experience. And I will be back in some form or other. And I'll keep you posted on what that will be. Anyway, keep the faith. Bye for now.